All right, so today we're just taking a look at the MS-300. Uh, this is a really cheap flash to have in the studio. It doesn't run on battery power. That's the uh, drawback. But if you're having this uh, in a studio, then it's going to be great for the price. Uh, I have already the uh, Godox X system. So I have this uh, X-Pro trigger. I have a bunch of their speed lights. I have the 8200, 8400, 8600. So uh, this is going to be something that I can build out my kit. Uh, build out my lineup of flashes without having to break the bank. So I wanted to check this out and uh, if it performs well then I might even grab a few more. So the specs are right there on the box. But we're not going to bother with that. For me though the thing that I really want to check and we will check in this video is uh, if the flash output is consistent and uh, mostly in color. I don't want too much of color variation from one shot to the next. So we'll see how that does and we'll also quickly check uh, how the color temperature compares to some of the other flashes, like I said, the AD400 Pro, uh, and maybe something else as well. So let's get this out of the box. Excuse my dinosaur band-aid. All right, so we've got some paperwork on top. We'll toss that aside for now. In this kit, there's a bunch of these, like, I guess you call them almost like gels. They're just like cloth covers that will stretch over the reflector uh, to give you some different color output. I don't really ever use these, but I guess it could be good for some more creative looks if you're using this like on a backdrop or something like that and you want to get a little splash of color. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five of these included in here. We've got the reflector here. Looks like a pretty standard reflector. This is Bowen's mount again, so it's got a built-in Bowen's mount. That's going to be great for working across the board with the other flashes that I already have. So there you go. This is the flash itself. We'll come back to that. And then you've got the cable. So I want to measure how long this is too. Of course, being uh, restricted to using it plugged into the wall, how long the cable is is definitely going to be an important factor. We actually have one more, a sixth little gel here. This is more of a diffusion cloth. You've got some spare, uh, I believe these are spare fuses down here. And there is the bulb. So this is the flash itself. Uh, it's a little bit lighter weight, it feels, than something like the 8400 Pro. Of course, there's no battery in here. The cap is a lot longer. Um, the flash tube on here, the design is a lot longer. I am curious as to see if that causes any issues with any of the modifiers, like if there's not enough space. The back, you have a bunch of buttons. You've got a sync port, USB port, the power switch over here, a test flash button, the modeling lamp button. Uh, this looks like it would be the sound. You can turn the beep on and off, maybe. Uh, your S1 and S2 modes, this is for optical flash triggering. Uh, when it sees another flash, it'll flash. Uh, so those modes are good to have. And then you've got your group and your channel for your wireless settings, as well as the dial up here for uh, adjusting different parameters. And we'll, we'll turn this on in a second and uh, see how it looks as well. So the mount down at the bottom does have a kind of ratcheting design, like a rosette in there, I assume that uh, is going to help to hold it in place pretty securely. So that, that's nice to see. It is plastic though, but uh, I wouldn't expect much differently from this price. And then you do have an umbrella mount here as well. It's spring loaded, so you could just slide it in there and it will hold itself in place. Here we've got the release for the Bowens mount uh, and it's got a little bit of a texture on it, a little bit of a shape to it. So not too bad in terms of being able to grip that and open that up easily. Take off the cap and there is the actual flash tube. So this is the modeling lamp. It's nice to have a nice powerful modeling lamp as well and I think this is also adjustable which is really good. So for the price you're getting quite a full featured little light here. Let's just screw that in there so we can see how it works. We'll put that reflector on there now too just so that way I don't accidentally bump anything. Just measuring the cable quickly here. It is roughly five meters long. So I think that's a nice length for the cable. It's definitely going to be workable in most studio setups. And it's just the single cable. You don't have any power brick or anything in the middle. Mine came with a three pin plug uh, and no adapter. And I'm in Japan, so I will need to use uh, a three to two pin adapter here to plug it in. Okay, so turn it on. And you get a nice clear display there. So this dial here again is if you're going to uh, manually adjust things from the light itself, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Very fine increments there. The beep is annoying, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. Something not so obvious here is that if you long press the beep button, it'll switch from displaying the power output in a fraction like you see here to a 5.0 to 10.0 scale instead. So there's two different ways that you can display the power on here. To switch back and forth between them, just long push that beep button. 
So the test button will also light up to let you know when it's ready. There you go. Two quick notes about the power settings here. Uh, I felt personally that it was kind of weird that if you go all the way down, it turns off. Um, I've never really felt the need for an off setting on the flash. Usually just don't flash it, but uh, there is that off setting if you go all the way down. And also, if you go up to a higher flash power and then you lower the power, as you can see, after you lower the power, this test button is blinking and that's because you need to pop it off once to release that charge that it's built up before you just get the typical, whatever that setting is, uh, output that you set it to. If we go all the way up to max power, let's see how fast that recycle is. Not bad, about what I'd expect. If you go down to, let's say, even half power, I think that's pretty respectable. Down to a quarter power. Now we've got, again, the modeling light lamp here. You can see that turn on and off. When you turn it on, it tells you a prop here, which is proportional. So as I adjust the power, go up to a higher power, uh, one to one, that should be higher. And as I turn the power of the flash down, so as I get down closer to the lowest level, you can see that that's much dimmer. So that modeling light will follow the settings that you have for your actual flash. So it's easy to kind of visualize lighting ratios and things like that. Very good to have that as an option. If you hold this button down for a few seconds, you can see another little icon pop up there. And that means that the modeling light will turn off when you're popping your flash. Now also, when you push this button, as you cycle it through proportional, the next step is a percentage. So you can see here, uh, the percent is at 100. If you click this dial, you can then adjust the proportion or the power of that modeling light independent of the output uh, of the flash itself. So you can go down uh, and it looks like 5% jumps. So a pretty decent control of that output there. Click it again to confirm. Just note that you shouldn't keep this modeling light on for too long, especially in soft boxes. Uh, because obviously the heat that it creates. So they recommend, you know, about 10 minutes or so, depending on maybe the power settings before giving it a few minutes to rest. If you hold down these two buttons at the same time, the wireless settings will turn on and off. So if you have no icons up at the top there, that means that the wireless is turned off. And if you turn it, uh, press them again, you'll see they turn back on. So if you're having issues connecting to your wireless trigger, that's why. So I'm really satisfied with the control that this light has built into it. It doesn't feel like you're missing out on anything. Uh, the build quality is, of course, plastic, but it's not bad. Um, you have all the features that I would want, including pretty fine control over the variable brightness modeling light in there, which is pretty bright. You've got decent enough recycle times as long as you're not doing anything extreme. I do also want to check the flash duration, and I'll put the specs up on screen, but having a fast enough flash duration will really help to uh, stop motion if you're doing any kind of photography with a lot of motion in it, that's important as well. I'll put that spec up on screen. Some of the other flashes, that flash duration is actually displayed on the screen here, but this one it's not. Uh, that's one difference, I guess. So let's just finish this off by testing with the Siconic C800. Uh, the consistency of the color between flashes, as well as just uh, check the color temperature so we can kind of put it side by side with the actual output of some of the other flashes in Godox's range. I'm going to be using the X-Pro to trigger this, and I'm also going to be using, like I said, the Siconic C800 uh, to measure this, and I'm going to have it off camera, though, about a meter away. So at minimum power, I'm getting pretty good consistency for the color temperature, uh, right around 5500K. Uh, sometimes it'll jump up or down 50K or so, but um, it's, it's staying pretty consistent at around 5500K. I'm also seeing a very slight magenta shift, but it's very consistent. So now at full power, uh, it's, again, consistent, but I'm seeing closer to 6,000K, so uh, almost 500K difference on average from what I was seeing at lowest power. So if you're mixing these uh, at different, significantly different power levels, then that might be an issue, but uh, it's not huge, I guess. There's also less of a magenta shift uh, at full power. Again, though, consistent in what it is. And just out of curiosity, at half power here, 
it seems to be right around 5750 or 5800k. So it does seem that that change from 5500k to 6000k uh, is gradual or is, I guess, stepped throughout the range. All right, so I just went to grab the 8400 Pro. I just want to draw some comparisons here. Uh, you can see here the difference in the modeling light. This has an LED modeling light. Uh, the other one has an actual modeling light tube. So the flash tube looks pretty similar though inside of there. This does have that uh, frosted front glass cover over all of that as well. I just want to check mostly uh, how the color output, the color temperature, the green magenta shift, things like that, uh, compare on this light compared to the MS300. So just we can see how well the, we should expect them to play together. So at the minimum power for the 8400 Pro here, we're getting quite different results, but also keep in mind that the minimum power is 1 128th power as opposed to 1 uh, over 32 on the MS300. Of course, the actual power output is different, so that's not going to correspond exactly, but we're here getting a minimum power around 6200K, at least on this one that I have here that I've been using for a couple years. And we're getting uh, absolutely no green magenta shift at minimum power. Up at one fourth power, we're still pretty close at 6100 or maybe 6200K, right around there. Not much of a change, again, fairly consistent. And again, still barely any uh, magenta shift. Uh, so very consistent from minimum power up to one fourth power uh, in the AD400 Pro. Let's go up a little higher. Same story at half power. Uh, we're at around 6100K and just very barely any magenta shift, but still consistent and close enough to the original minimum power output. At full power, it did drop down a little bit more down to around 5900K. Uh, still the same in terms of green magenta shift, but consistent and still over the range of light, this does remain closer uh, in value from minimum to maximum. So that is maybe something to consider. But this will mix pretty well with the MS300 at its higher powers, which were closer to that 6000K range. So again, for the price, man, you're getting a long cable, you're getting a fairly powerful flash uh, with a fairly powerful customizable modeling lamp. You got full features on here in terms of control. It works with that X-Pro system, so it's very easy to fit into a larger lineup of flashes that you may or may not already have. Uh, I definitely think it might be worth grabbing a few of these to have around your studio in a more permanent setup because you do need this cable. Um, but I'm very satisfied with what I got for the price. I've used other name brand, I guess Godox is now kind of becoming a main brand, but I've used more famous name brand flashes. Their lower entry level models are worse than this, or at least at the very same. So in terms of an entry level model, I think that you're absolutely getting more than you pay for with this flash. And I wouldn't really expect it to be much better for this price. If it was, that would be just overkill and, and Godox would be eating up their entire lineup. So I think they did a really good job with this one for a very accessible uh, flash that would allow people to have more than one light, which is probably more important than having one expensive light. So highly recommend it. And I'm going to pick up a few more myself.